CAA play started for the Tigers this week. The Tiger Lacrosse Report starts now. For an athlete, there's nothing scarier than a torn ACL. Athletes trust us with their care and their careers because we're a recognized leader in sports medicine. Get back to your active life sooner with MedStar Sports Medicine. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a, a product called Peanut Butter Indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl, and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. If you come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packets of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream, and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years to Wise Markets, and uh, I'm loving every minute of it. Welcome fans to another edition of the Tiger Lacrosse Report. I'm your host, Spiro Marikas. This past Saturday, the Tigers traveled up to Hempstead, New York to take on the pride of Hofstra. First CAA game of the year did not turn out well for the Tigers as they fall 9-3. to Head coach Sean Nadlin with us as always, and Coach, at halftime it was 2-1, to one, and both teams were playing well defensively, but I think you could also say that both teams were not playing well offensively because nobody was getting shots on cage. Yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. You know, we we didn't do a great job offensively all game. Obviously, they were able to, to tweak some, some things and, and make some plays in the second half to, to earn that victory for them. Uh, offensively for us, we were out of sorts. We had guys, you know, holding on to the ball way too long, something that we hadn't done a lot of. Um, in the previous games um, leading up to that. So it was pretty uncharacteristic and pretty frustrating. Was it anything that they were doing defensively, or do you put it all on your offense that, hey, we just didn't perform well? Yeah, it was on us. We, we knew they were going to be a quick sliding defense. Um, you know, watching them on film, you could get any matchup you wanted because they switched all the picks, and uh, they would slide quickly to pretty much any matchup. And, you know, we we knew that. You know, Coach Gallardi did a good job preparing our, our offense for that. Um, just in the in the moment in the game, we didn't do a good job, you know, dodging and moving the ball, and especially just transferring the ball from behind the cage when we dodged up top and cycling ball from behind to up top. We had opportunities, um, you know, throughout the game to to do that. We also had opportunities when we did that to, to score some goals. You know, their goalie played decent. I didn't think he played to the caliber that he's normally capable of playing, um, but we we left a lot of plays on the field. The other thing, against Denver, you only had eight turnovers, which was well below your, your season average, but the turnover showed its ugly head again on Saturday against Hofstra. Yeah, again, I think it went to our, you know, our offense and then, you know, defense as well. We had a, you know, failed clear early in the game, which was a simple, you know, pass and catch play. You know, we're throwing to a freshman coming out of the box and he was probably a little nervous getting really his first true action and it bounces off his stick. So it was, it was frustrating in that regard. And then no doubt having the turnovers, you know, continues to hurt us. And, you know, a lot of it's on us, not so much what the other team's doing. On offense, you didn't have John Mazzo. On defense, you didn't have Sid Yule. A couple of team violations, and and I'm sure that's tough during the week to to try to on the fly get get some changes made. It is, um, you know, those two guys have been staples of our program uh, the past few years, and you know, not just you know who you know 
who's going to fill in those roles, what's the offense going to look like, you know, do we need to run some different stuff defensively, do we need to bounce some people around, move some people around, which we did. Uh, it was more just the, um, you know, the process of, you know, the suspensions and, and you know, their actions and then getting the team to understand, you know, what was going on and making sure that they understood, you know, it was like, hey, you know, we can't, you, know, you can never know when somebody's going to get injured. You never know when something, you know, is going to go wrong and, you know, we have to take disciplinary action. You know, you just got to be able to obviously process it, put it behind you and move forward. Uh, but it was very hard to, to do that last week because things started uh, early in the week and they didn't end until literally we were getting on the bus heading up to Hofstra. All right. Well, the, the, I guess the good news is, is if you're going to play a stinker, you got it out of the way week one and you've got a lot of time to, to regroup here in conference play. We do, and the guys are positive. Um, you know, they know that you know we, you know, we've been close. We've been playing on some really good lacrosse up into the Hofstra game. The Hofstra game got away from us in the second half, and um, you know that was on us. You know, lack of focus, lack of um, attention to detail. Um, but we control that, and we control everything that uh, we have going forward with regards to you know our, our practice intensity and our execution and um it's on us to be able to to correct it and move forward and, and to be able to step on the field against drexel ready to go i guess the one thing that uh you know the denver game they've got maybe the greatest face-off man of all time in baptiste this week against hofstra if there was any um you know well we really got beat in on the face-offs. It didn't show up this week because you did a good job on the face-off circle. Yeah, both guys. Steven started out for us, took us into the third quarter, did a really good job there. Alex came in and, and was able to, to do well. Both guys were over 50%. Um, so, again, that you know that's a was a bright spot where you know it wasn't you know against Denver. It wasn't against Ohio State. So, hopefully get some more consistency there going forward. All right, so the Tigers will try to regroup this next week when they take on the Drexel Dragons. Tune in later on to TowsonTigers.com as Coach Natalie and I will talk about the matchup, the first home game in CAA play this week at Johnny United Stadium. So for head coach Sean Natalie, I'm Spiro Maricus. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Tiger Lacrosse Report. And as always, go Tigers.